we're here at Kubicon 2018 in Seattle, and I'm talking with Palumi and Atomis. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what the companies are doing here at uh, Kubicon and how you're involved in Kubernetes? Yeah, definitely, thanks for having us. So we're super excited to be here at KubeCon Cloud Native Con. So we, we announced our support for deployment to Kubernetes um, in our latest release software delivery machine from Atomist. And the focus is really on coding and developing software delivery. So when we walk around the floor here and talk with people, this is definitely the audience of why we're here. Um, this is all about software delivery to Cloud Native. Um, and what a great conference. Thanks. Uh, yes, yeah, so and thanks for having us. Uh, so I'm Mark from Pulumi. Uh, Pulumi is uh, delivering cloud native infrastructure as code. Uh, we really mean it this time, uh, meaning you can truly take cloud native infrastructure and define it using general purpose programming languages. Uh, we've supported Kubernetes since about mid October. It's been an uh, exciting amount of adoption, driven an exciting amount of adoption for us. Uh, and we've continued to extend that capability to things like automatic sidecar injection, to uh, uh, Prometheus, to the service mesh uh, overlays, and so on in Kubernetes. So uh, we're excited to be here and explain to people what Pulumi does. So we're still fairly new to Kubernetes, and we're uh, we're learning about it. Um, you know, we started in virtualization, but if things have evolved, VMblog has become more involved in containers. So um, maybe you can explain for us, you know, why is the manifesto needed, and who is it intended for? Right. Yeah. Why don't I start that? So the manifesto, just so everybody knows, we're talking about the software-defined delivery manifesto. And so this is a manifesto that really was published, uh, an early version of it a few weeks ago, and, and it was coming together of people from different parts of the industry looking at delivery and different aspects of that at the application level and the infrastructure level in code with this idea that in 2018 and going forward in a cloud native world, we should be engineering our solutions much like we do our own infrastructure and our own applications. So we took a, a hard look at uh, the approaches and said, wait a minute, there are some gaps here, there are some needs, and went through um, and codified that in the form of the manifesto. Um, really happy to see a lot of support from different parts of the industry uh, in the manifesto, but the, the main idea and the tagline and the hashtag for it is uh, deliver in code. So deliver various aspects and stages, but let's do it in code. Let's engineer uh, what we do best. Yeah, and from my perspective, it was interesting to get involved, just because we, what we saw was companies like Atomist, and there are others too, who are seeing this need for change inside what we considered uh, configuration and provisioning of all of this sort of infrastructure. As the cloud's evolved, and, you know, leaving aside people's regular estate, but as the cloud has evolved, it's gone through so many different stages already, uh, to this increasing ephemerality of the infrastructure that you stand up means that developers need to develop a centric approach to think about infrastructure, which really means you know, collaborating around a common language. But it also means that the current solutions that are in that space are um, reaching the, the, their limits. So right. um, there is a good point solution for any aspect of clouds, you know, configuration or, or cloud provisioning, but none of it stretches across the whole set of things that you need to do, and none of it is particularly uh, suited to engineering. And, and so I think that's what we're codifying as an idea and a principle inside the, inside the manifesto. Uh, and that's, of course, you know, what Atomist uh, and Pulumi are attempting to do from our different uh, perspectives. And so how did you guys go about determining uh, who to engage as authors for the manifesto? Yeah, uh, Ryan, who did you talk to originally? Sure, we both yeah. have. Yeah. So it sort of germinated from a set of conversations that we were having with people in different companies, different parts of the industry. So to Mark and I are here talking about this because both companies and people who are sort of behind the ideas believe in doing things in code. Um, but we also had participation of people sort of coming, where do they come from? Conferences, connections through the Twitter sphere on the same concept, right? Like where, where are we going in terms of uh, programming our, our delivery? Um, and so I think the, the voices are definitely, you know, practitioners looking at it from different perspectives. Um, you know, vendors, platforms, uh, end users. Um, so it's not only the contributions of the named authors on the manifesto, but also, uh, you know, the hundreds of people who've signed it and others who've made contributions. And I should say also that this is, you know, it's a repo on GitHub. This is an open process. Um, there have already been um, pull requests and conversations around uh, augmenting it, and the idea is this should be a place for people to talk about how we do delivery in this next era. Yeah, um, you know, there's, I mean, there are many companies that potentially would want to participate in this. Uh, mm -hmm. There are, you know, anyone who thinks about 
codifying any aspect of uh, delivery pipeline, uh, we'd love to take part. I think what was interesting about seeding it is as soon as it was launched, a lot of people started signing up. I got a lot of emails sort of saying, hey, you're not talking about oh, you know, security life cycles, for instance, how do we take part? And so uh, I'd encourage anyone who's got a point of view on some aspect of that manifesto and is primarily just interested in you know, thinking about how do you engineer uh, software delivery, uh, you know, put in a PR and, and help us out with that for sure. There are many different angles to look at. It's, it's not like uh, delivery of software is a small surface area. Right. Um, so what do you guys hope to accomplish with this uh, effort and you know, how can viewers get involved if they want to uh, involve themselves in your, in your efforts? You know, I think uh, the, the manifesto represents a change, and so uh, I'll, I'll quote Rob, act, uh, Rod actually, uh, Rod Johnson. He said, uh, "Sometimes you have to say some obvious things," and I think that we haven't seen a lot of pushback on the basic ideas that why aren't we engineering um, these things? But it actually does take time to educate and to help people feel confident with those things. The, the current technology set to deliver the things that we're talking about is reasonably robust. It's been done like that for a period of time, but it is reaching some limits. Um, and so it's not just as simple as saying, well, hey, we invented a new way of doing this thing. It is a question of saying, isn't there just a better way? You know, there, isn't there a way that we can codify and think about uh, engineered solutions to this stuff? And so really, I think what I'm hoping is people look at that, what they see is actually some common sense principles, uh, and then they begin to think about what the impact of that truly is on you know, delivery pipelines and standing up infrastructure and so on and so forth. Yeah, I would just add that, and we've already seen this energizing around uh, the concept and the kind of involvement that you know, I think we're looking for and what successor looks like is that um, much of what we've seen so far, when people hear this concept and think about really where we are, which we sometimes talk about as being a local maximum, like we're using tools and practices that we brought along with us, and, and that's normal. But if you step back from it and look at where we actually are uh, as a state of the industry and the, and the practice, you realize, wait a minute, um, actually, we can optimize by, by going over there toward that other hill um, through different approaches and different practices. So I think one of the main goals here is to just illuminate the issue, um, broaden awareness, uh, and get more people involved in contributing their thoughts and ideas, because this is an industry-wide um, idea. Uh, and in terms of where to go to get involved, I'll reach in my pocket. Uh, we had these um, software defined delivery manifesto things printed up, but it's sdd-manifesto.org um, to read it, um, sign it. Uh, there are links there to the GitHub repo to participate and contribute. Great. And I mean, so what you're really talking about is delivery of code, right? Um, how do you how do you deliver code? I mean, yeah, it's, we're talking about it's it, delivery of code with code. It's kind of yeah. what I like to say is as engineers, we've somehow put up with using not engineering our own delivery process for a long, long time. Uh, but we wouldn't think about and dream about building applications or building infrastructure the way we've been doing delivery a lot. Which and to get specific in the manifesto, calls some of this out is the idea that we should do this in code. And code means a lot of things. I mean, there are um, great scripting languages and compiled languages and ways of implementing it. What we're really saying is, let's make sure that this is structured, testable, version. There's some principles in the manifesto around this. Um, so that what we don't end up with is unsupportable, unmaintainable quagmire of, of um, you know, shell scripts and things that we kind of see happening as a practice and, and no one would say it's a best practice. So let's move beyond that. Let's move toward better engineered delivery. Yeah, and an example of that from my world. So if you consider the push towards serverless or you know, Lambda-based programming, um, then you know, it's meant to be a really great environment for a developer to work with, and so for sure I can build the code that's going to execute as a Lambda function, but actually standing up the infrastructure is still pretty painful. Um, so Pulumi as a for instance, uh, we have this idea of Lambdas as Lambdas, which means if you use event-based programming inside JavaScript, not only is the code going to execute um, as an event, so as, as a Lambda function within the language, but it's going to be smart enough to understand that it needs to build the infrastructure to create that Lambda function in order to execute that code in the first place. So you're tying together the intent of the infrastructure you're attempting to build alongside the code. And it's just one of it, it's just an example, you know, the, but the, the general idea is how do I truly think about engineering processes for, you know, standing up infrastructure, for delivery pipelines, so how do I really ship my code and in increasingly distributed applications of many different, you know, he, you know heterogeneous parts. Um, that needs an engineering solution. And as soon as you do have an engineering solution, it turns out it's really, really efficient. You don't have to do it the old way. Great. Well, I want to thank you guys for taking the time to speak with VM Blog, and uh, you know maybe we'll have a chance to come by and take a look at 
uh, your product more in depth at the uh, booths out on the show floor. And uh, again, thank you very much for your time. Smashing. Have a happy holidays and thanks for saving us from the expo floor. It's really busy, so it's great yeah. to take half an hour. Can't get through. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it.